We've had a really bizarre spring here in Alberta this year, 2021. Not a lot of snow, early runoff, not much precip. It's 21 Celsius, which is about 70 Fahrenheit for April 29th. But no bugs. Uh, relatively low clear water, I would say kind of like that mid-late July conditions. And we're out here targeting brown trout, possibly a bull trout or two. And real low light conditions, so I'm going to go with a kind of a sparkly uh, crystal bugger, brown, and with a tungsten bead head. And about, what, 20 inches above that, you've seen that spun deer hair bugger with a couple of splitties. And that's on a 12 foot leader to 3x, and the 3x is... Well, actually, it's kind of counterintuitive. More, the, uh, what I mean by that is if I'm hammering the surface with two splitties and a tungsten bead, it's not so much a function of, oh, light tip, it's spooky fish. No, the idea is to land the flies near the structure. And that's why I have that, I think it's a 12 or 13 foot leader to 3X. The idea is to keep your fly line back of your target zone and, and structure. You're going to cast up. Put it alongside the structure, be it a seam, a log, a depression, a stump, whatever that darker green zone is. Put it up and along the side, let it sink two, three seconds, pulse, pulse, pulse. Bring it across, watch for movement. If nothing, guess what? Roll, back, pause, place at your next target, and away. Okay, so what we have right here is a big long flat, uh, the old 100 meter dash, coming off a fine Alberta pipeline. And usually with pipeline crossings, there's a cut bank on a creek. And that cut bank, high bank, usually has a trough along the edge of it. And, I don't know, pipeline or cut bank or, or, or. Usually on these big long flats, there's not a lot of structure. But any subtle seam will be a rock, an embedded log, that kind of stuff. And... Well, I'm just gonna have a go. Again, this is a don't false cast too many times. Just get it out there, take a cast. It's pretty shallow, but you just don't know where they're gonna come from. There could easily be a fish behind any structure point on that far bank. And you just wanna get your flies in there and announce you're here without landing it on whatever is sitting there right on their head you want to kind of draw them out to you and while you're walk walking up this see that right off that there's a log a stick and a rock and again on this flat water you really watch the end of your fly line for any takes for any anything that says a fish just took it and as you're walking up you want to make a point of looking for rises okay just pause and place right in the corner right above that rock let it sink that undercut with a log could easily have somebody sitting there right in the pocket back there again you'll see that my fly line lands on my side of the drop off so that only my flies are landing in the deeper water along shore again you don't want to pound fish on the head with everything i'm i'm taking risks here we go just out from the bank in the rock but i'm taking risks even casting two weighted flies you know they're here look now we're getting into some deeper water over there with some seams right in there there's a big rock let that sink bring it back I'm not terribly confident because there's all sorts of footprints on the water in the mud along. Oh, there's a rise. Stop. Yeah, we're going to convert to dry right off those rocks. We had a fish rise. And again, that's that cut bank thing. And anytime there's a cut bank, there's usually a trough over there. And just as I was streamer fishing, there was a rise. And we've seen a couple March Brown mayflies and a couple of late winter black stoneflies. And I'm not sure which he took. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was the mayfly. And it's right there on shore. There's a couple of white rocks. And then just three feet out, there's a little seam line with a couple of uh, submerged rocks. And I got rid of the double splitties. I got rid of the shorter 12, 13 foot leader in favor now of a 14 foot leader 
down to 4x only because there's been a lot of sign of other anglers and usually when the water is somewhat low and clear and footprints it's been worked and hasn't been rested hasn't had a fresh of any higher or muddier water all spring so i'm just going to go for it and with a right now basically just a kind of a pheasant tail emerger which is pheasant tail nymph body with a little poly wing and a burst of uh three or four wraps oh right there across from me right on that bank right see that submerged there. rock glasses on a second. Come on. right there oh okay see that yeah. submerged rock yeah. top side of it in that bucket against the shore there yeah. let me know when you're focused yeah. and yeah it's that cut bank trough thing again it was a nice sipping rise okay so right tight to the bank yeah. right yeah. okay i'm just gonna go for it love where am I? Right there. That should do it. Right in there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that. Hey, that's a nice little brownie. So for anybody watching this, we just drove from four hours from home. The wind was 80, 90 kilometers an hour with the mother of all arches, Chinook arches. And we said, let's go find no wind. You know, that's what we've done. Ah, what a beautiful take that was. Oh, man. Just gorgeous. Just sippity-doo. You got it? Yeah, you bet. I got you and the fish. That's Wicked. Cool. There he goes. <laughs> I'm going to try for a second one. Wicked. Wicked. Sure yeah, that's, that's, that's that. There's one, two together. Yes. And then that foam line right there. Yes. In there. Yes. You let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready for you. Okay, here I go, love. Going out of fish that rose about five minutes ago. You got that? Yeah. I think he's another foot to the right of that, personally. Okay. Maybe 18 inches to the right of that. Let's play that out. <laughs> oh, there he is. You got that? Okay, I'm going to go right at that fish. Again, tailwind, I want to pause and place because that wind has a tendency. Oh, yeah, you see that head? Oh, no, that was a gorgeous head. <laughs> it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. So that was pretty cool. Hey? That was really cool. Yeah. I mean, what a head and what an eat just right off that bank, right? Yeah. And just as we stand here, you know, I, I that trough and that depth change right against tight to that bank. I'm just looking and looking and there's been four rises. One was a roll probably on a stone fly, but the others were so simple, dimple, pimple oh, kind were. of thing, oh, you know? Yeah, I got to think they were mayfly eaters. I don't if know. If not it's... midges or maybe small stone flies. Yeah, maybe, you know, it's not like there's a lot on the surface right now, but But the yeah, truth is yeah. I got to calm myself down. We just cut off the highway four and a half hour drive yeah. from home and show up and we're peak of the afternoon and you know, you only have a few hour window and we're right in the middle of it today. Yeah. And now I'm just looking. The truth is that I pulled the camera out to do a, hi, I'm in camera, uh, <laughs> trying to rest the fish that I just stuck in this. Hey. And all we're doing is, is yeah. looking still. <laughs> yeah, so I, even though I'm talking so, to you guys yeah. at home, yeah. I am sitting here scanning that undercut bank. Yeah. For any signs of movement or, or heads or fins or just a subtle dimple. Yes. And it's just, I got to calm myself down because I'm too excited to be here. Oh, yeah. I hear you on that. <laughs> okay, well, let's rest. Count to 100 or okay. two, and away we go. So again, basically from right up here, and you look, that is all undercut on that line from that hillside. And there's a, a pipeline as well as a power line. Okay, that's the same fish. Okay, so Amelia's going to interrupt me, and you guys will set up, and I'll catch up to you. But yeah, this is a long 100-yard run, and two-thirds of the way through it transitions from a shallow and to an undercut bank. There we went again. You may as well take a few. Yeah. Move in on that if you want to. Yeah. And all the way along here, you see that stick there, the severity of the, the, the fall down of that undercut bank there, and all the way along there to about where the gravel and that fence are. And all of that is just prime, prime brown trout water. Amelia is just setting up, waiting for one rise on 180 frames per second. It's pretty cool when you can, when you know where the fish is and you know where it's rising. And yet there's not enough bugs to bring it up consistently, hey? Mm. But it's sitting there. It rose three times after I stuck it and lost it. And it's right in there, which is really cool. Just on the other side of the rocks. And here we go. Up, pause, and place it's right at shore see that coming in here we go 
Yeah, I saw him come right off that bank. What a take. I saw his, he turned left and came right up. Stunning male, I think, if I had to guess. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's why early spring, it's always worth waiting out a fish that you miss. You just, you know, they're just not terribly educated yet. And anytime that you can do that and have a go at a fish, that's a really good solid fish. Wow. Yeah, I like that. Gorgeous fish. Yeah, that's the neat stuff. Hey, you know, in spring season, when the fish haven't really been caught in a lot of dry fly stuff, um, there's a lot of locals that are spin fishing or, well, streamer fishing too. And these fish would have been targeted by that. And I'm pretty sure that's what the footprints um, would yeah, be from. Yeah, that we're seeing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's not been a lot of bugs to this point. So the bugs are starting and yeah. Hey, I mean, we'll take a fish that's yeah. not been <laughs> fed a lot of dries as yet. Yeah. yeah. No, you can just hear it, the excitement in my yeah. voice and then the bugger when I missed it. Yeah. And sorry, I'm not looking at the camera because I'm as I talk, I'm scanning that far bank. Everything. Yeah, we both are. <laughs> yeah. And just because I didn't catch anything downstream of me with the streamer on the way up, um, because I've been standing here for 15 minutes, you know, caught the one, uh, hooked, the lost, then caught that 20 incher. Yeah. And now I'm just waiting because you just don't know. And no, but that's the thing with that fish. It, it came, sucked in my dry, pop, pop, pop. Uh, head shake head shake head shake pop yep. well you know what don't give up on it especially on a cloudy cool low light day like this uh, give it time yeah we just rested it right we yeah. just gave it a good you know i'd say maybe five to ten minutes and yep. then it rose three started... times quick hey? yeah, yeah it really did so it's like okay well he's gonna do that then wait again perfect right and yeah yeah no so just wait and i fed the same same fly over there and you know what it, it, it doesn't always have to be a fly change uh the same fly hooked that fish twice so yeah. that's really cool and early in the season yeah right? well so, that's yeah, yeah low light and not crystal clear that. and yeah exactly yeah. okay well <laughs> i hate to say it but i'm still looking against the bank here and yeah why wouldn't you want to look at that bank hey <laughs> i'm just gonna follow up here with my streamers and gonna start a little bit short but mostly try to work over to that deeper that deeper bank it's just perfect perfect water um, right over in there and you can see where those flies are landing is just right off that seam into a slightly deeper pocket and I'm gonna work all of this as I as I go up then again I've got the same setup that uh, pretty much the same setup that Dave had on when he was streamer fishing so i got a double double streamer set up separated by about 15 inches and both of which are weighted the top fly has uh tungsten weight um bottom fly just i have it's unweighted and so yeah there we go there's one awesome felt that sweet yeah right on man nice brownie Got to like that, and I love this spot that Orvis has on these new packs for the net. Really pleased about that. It makes life so much easier. Don't have to crank my arm anymore. <laughs> nice fish. Gorgeous. There we go. Yeah, nice fish. Right on. <laughs> well, perfect water. Had to be another fish or two in there. What you have is a long, shallow, flat pulse of the water will undercut that bank over there. But what happens is you don't have a lot of depth, but you do have undercuts. Dark spot there, dark spot under that tree, dark spot under that tree, not terribly deep. You can't fire a big ass anything under there with a lot of weight right in there because what'll happen is you'll spook the fish by landing on it. You get one chance if you got a big, big fly, heavy fly. So what I like to do is with the smaller, lightly weighted and remove one split shot, go with just one splitty at the head of that fly. If I'm targeting the fish that might be there, I'm casting, see that, that top spruce is screwing up my cast. So I have to lead it all the way there in order to get to the bank. But if I lead that with heavy fly, well, it's gonna go right 
I can get hung up on the bottom. So I want to go a little bit lighter and just kind of let it drift, swing, pop, pulse right along that structure. And that is a one split shot zone kind of a structure. Now, if there was any kind of hatch, that fish that's sitting there would be showing and would just be sucking in dry flies along that bank. So instead, right on the bank, flutter, flutter, flutter. And if anybody was there looking to eat, that cast there, what a dunner. So I'm just gonna do that again at the next spot. Oh, there's a stone fly fluttering. And I'm just gonna hit the downstream edge of that right underneath, see if anybody comes out. Nope. Then I'm gonna lift, pause, and just place. That's on the grass, but just kind of doink, doink, doink. Yeah, there we go. We're right in there. Perfect cast. Even though I was on the bank, no, it doesn't matter. That's a perfect cast because I can walk it off that grass into that shoreline trough. And again, top side of that tree, foot off the bank, let it do its thing. Watch your fly line indicator and see if anybody comes scooting out of there. There's nothing saying that those fish aren't there. It's shallow and it's early in the season, but there's enough water over there that somebody might just come charging off that underneath that bank. And you can do all sorts of different retrieves and all sorts of neat stuff. Okay, pause it there, up, pause, and where do I want that? Let's do this. Let's drive it down on top of that rock. And I just stopped my forward cast to knock that fly straight down to the water in hopes that that really gets that fly to bang, bang into the water. So again, that one is just here, stop, boof and that drives it right in. Other times you just want to kind of do a reach and just kind of flutter that over there, right along that rock log over there. See if anybody wants to come out for a chasey swim. No, too, I think I'm too shallow on that flat right now. Okay, here we go. Flutter it over top of these rocks. Right in through there. That's where I had the first one hit. Oh, there he was. Oh, 18 inch or easy. Yeah, he had it in his mouth and said, no can do. So this looks to be really good water. The best water we've seen in probably the last hundred or so yards. And I'm just going to start to work it. Of course, from the tail up and just kind of try to hit the best, best water. I'm staring into a bit of glare right now, so it's not easy to see but I know based on structure what the best water is going to be and that's going to be at the likely at the head of the pool where the drop comes in but I'm going to start kind of right out in the main part of the seam and then I'm going to start to work further across and do one just right across the way from me right up in there Change my angle, face upstream, and get a cast right up on the inside edge here. Okay, I'm gonna walk a couple steps forward, get another cast, let those flies really come into that drop-off zone. And just do a few quick strips. If nothing, pick it up again, and cast it further right over and bring it along. Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nice. Sweet. Right where he needed to be, you know? Again, the prime water. Prime water being right at that drop-off kind of bucket zone. Awesome. Feels like a decent fish. Gotta love that. <laughs> and just Bring him to the tail out. Come on, buddy. Looks like he took my bottom fly. Yeah, that's a nice fish. It's got some decent weight to it. Really nice fish. And I'll get his head up here. Come on, bud. Head up and scoop him in the net. Yeah, beautiful male. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Beautiful male, pretty red spots, really gorgeous fish, yeah.
Gorgeous blue spot on this fish. Love that spot behind the eye. Okay, you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Gorgeous. And away he goes. Start short, start short, right in, right in the tail out. You never know. Grandma, Grandpa could be sitting there. Boy, I want there to be fish. I want there to be active fish. But you should see the footprints just up here. Holy cow. Might have to go deeper with another splitty on this. That way when I cast up there, it drops, drops, drops. This would also be a perfect run. There we go, that was a good hit. Okay, drop that thing. There he is. That's good fish. Come down here where you can direct these guys. It's not that good a fish, but it's a happy fish. I like I like it when the fish are happy. Pop that out. There we go. Sweet. Yeah, nice little fish. Nice fish. There you go. There you go. Yeah, beautiful. Let him go. Okay, so that fish was caught on a single uh, split shot. I tied on a second split shot just so I can get it down quicker, faster, right in this target zone here. Oh, there he is. Yeah, just to get a little deeper. Another nice little brown. Come down. <laughs> Come on, little button. There we go. Sweet. There we go. Sweet. Okie dokie. So that's why I tied on that second splitty. Whoop! Get it in there, get it deep, and watch that end of that fly line. If it tightens up, you probably got a fish. <laughs> that's the tip of the week. Oh! Big fish just came and honkered on it. He literally spun all over it and did not... I just missed the set. Yeah, that was a 20, 21 inch fish again. Yeah, so we'll just walk that through there, strip, and just see what he does if he comes again. No, ah, oh, that's a heartbreaking fish. That's what I'm thinking, to be honest with you. Pheasant tail and. I'll just walk that guy, that's that same fish. Yeah, it's the same one that I told you about was following. He was mouth hugging that streamer all the way down. It's not the big one that dropped out, but it's a nice fish. Real nice piece of water. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. I'm going to end up just nymphing probably about four feet down. I know that there's, I know that there's quite a few uh, March brown many flies. We've got late winter black stone flies you know they're nothing sexy but that right there is essentially a, a a pheasant tail with a little red thread and a little peacock up front just slim tie heavy boom get it down i'm probably going to do that along with maybe something in a little bit bigger size i might even go flashy copper flashy kind of copper john and and just do that so between those two will probably be about 18 inches, and I'm just gonna hang it under an indicator. This is a classic, awesome check nymphing run, but at the same time, it's loaded with sticks on the bottom. So I'm just gonna do these and hang them off of uh, an indicator at about four feet down off the indicator. And I don't wanna go too deep because I don't wanna lose flies because while well, we're having fun, don't gotta catch everything, but I just wanna see if I can get that big guy hanging out in the back end of that run. So with the New Zealand strike indicator wool, um, they want you to trim that off. But it's been my experience with heavier nymphs that if you actually pull out from that cluster and just leave little fingers, 
that'll actually be the piece that hangs on and keeps your whole uh, wool rig from sinking. It's funny because once you get that bulked up in there, if I trim that off, that's it's just and flare it. Yeah, it looks pretty, but it's not as effective if you have that little ling linger fingers, what I call, and that's quite often after a couple hours of use, that's actually what's floating the whole system. This will be buoyant and, and remain buoyant and shed water, but it's this stuff through here that will be the actual indicator. And that's what I love leaving that on. Yeah, it's not pretty and it's not the way you're supposed to do it, but that's the stuff right there that uh, really makes this indicator magic. Okay, so I'm going on a nymphin. And yeah, that's a classic check, but look at all of that wood on the bottom. So I'm about four feet down to my top fly, well, three feet down to my top fly. And I'm just hoping that they're still targeting mayfly, uh, March Brown mayfly emergers. Maybe some lingering free drift uh, late winter black stoneflies. Let's go right up this seam here. Make some noise. Yeah. There it is. That's a good fish. Colorful fish that is. Sweet. Nice. Right up that seam, hey? Not a huge fish, but a gorgeous brownie. Sweet. So drives, streamers, and nymphs. Yeah. Right in there. Boy, he slammed that. Just absolutely slammed that fly. You ready? Absolutely. I'm rolling on you. Yeah, okay, here we go. Gotta get that fly out of my finger. Yeah. And there we go. There we go. And anytime, yep. Gorgeous.